Hey everybody, David here from Living Tech. Thanks for joining me. Today I'm going to review the hand show power frunk module for the Tesla Model X. Uh, Tesla, for those of you who aren't Tesla cool, Tesla has a, uh, a front trunk, which they call a frunk. And this is a great uh, extra trunk for you to use. It's quite large actually, so it's incredibly useful. But the only problem with it is the Tesla Model X is an aluminum car, almost all aluminum. And so all of the body panels are aluminum. And when you go, when you need to put the frunk down, it's manual and you have to use two hands on the frunk. You have to hold it near, near the front edge of the panel and, and push down on it with two hands. If you don't, then you could dent the aluminum. When you double click the this guy or when you use the app to open the frunk or when you use the center console to open the frunk uh, in all cases all it does is unlock the frunk you still have to lift it up so Handshow offered me this product to review I did not pay for it but I also have no obligation to give any sort of positive uh, review uh, so this is uh, you know straight up uh, I did a full unboxing installation here it's like a 20 minute video, so I'm just gonna give you my thoughts up front. This is a game changer for this vehicle. Uh, I, I love using the frunk now. I almost never used it before. The reason I do it is it's so easy. It's uh, a double click opens it, a double click closes it. Uh, and I think that if you're a Tesla Model X owner, uh, you will see exactly what I'm talking about. They also make one for the Model S and the Model 3. So whichever Tesla you drive, you're probably facing the same uh, frustration that I was. And uh, now that's all gone. I use the frunk all of the time. I love the product. It's super easy to install as long as you have one tool. And that is, a, I think it's an $8 tool on Amazon. Uh, and I'll put a link right there. Um, and what it is, is it's a little ratchet that holds that directly holds a screwdriver bit and what that allows you to do is to use a torx bit or, or i think it was a torx 20 or 25 bit in that to take out the switch the safety release switch that's on the inside of the frunk the reason you need this tool is there's only about a centimeter space between the back of the screw and the next thing ahead of it and without taking off the front I don't know if it's a front bumper or whatever you're not really going to be able to do this very well uh, I happen to already have this tool it was obvious to me from the start how to do it I suggest that if you're a Tesla owner you at least watch this video so that you can get an idea of what is available if you're a do-it-yourselfer uh, you probably won't have too much problem installing this if you do just uh, leave a message here and I will get back to you with any uh, guidance or advice or pictures or whatever. Um, but more importantly, uh, it, whether you install it yourself or have you know a stereo installer or whatever do this for you, I highly recommend it. Like I said, it's a game changer for a Tesla owner. So anyway, sit back and watch this and uh, please feel free to ask me any questions you like. Handshow has offered any of our subscribers or viewers 10% off the purchase price of this, this module. So if this is of interest to you, please use our link below. Thanks for tuning in. I appreciate it. And if you like this video, please click like because it helps our channel. Click subscribe if you want to see more videos like it. And I'll catch you in a second.
Next, it looks like we have to remove this. So we need to get down there to make sure. So this clips into this plastic part, so just remember when you're putting it back in, you have to clip that in. I need to take this out. Two more clips in here. place uh, there's a manual pull switch here it's, it's attached to these red pull tabs you go into there you uh, can yank on those and it will open the front so we've got a tight situation here will this come off yeah we need to pull this guy off pretty easy so far this is just uh, knowing what you're gonna encounter so hopefully this video helps uh, you guys there we go just need to unscrew this okay so those are both there I'm just gonna grab out a magnet just don't want to drop these so I'm just gonna pull them out Right, just uh, yeah, simple switch. I kind of love it when things are easy. So these, you just super simple. You just remove this single clip here. There you go. Another spring here. Another clip. I mean. And that pulls out. So it looks like this is the same length as the other one. So I'm going to pop these springs, retaining clips, I should say. So I'm going to see if I can just pop these in here. Okay, super easy. Done. Not hard. None of this has been hard so far. There. Struts are in. So it sort of looks like this would go in here and then connect to that spring. So I hate springs. They're always harder to get off than you think they're gonna be. Except for that one. Comes in this bag, back here, and that's the spring. Now, I think we're gonna have to take this guy off. So, yeah, of course we are. So we get the other one in.
So there's a little notch here. Go, I'm going to rotate this down so that I can fit that notch into that slot, I guess you'd call it. Um, and so now it's captive. This one goes in, so you hold this piece with the long, with the, sort of in this orientation. So the angled slot and the hole are on the left. The flat side is the flat, the long flat side is towards this, towards this uh, latch mechanism here. So that is how it's supposed to look. Now we take the spring put one side in here stretch it put the other side in there okay so now we've got this whole thing set up put this on here everything's been pretty obvious so far uh, well, coupled with my memory of what I read, I guess. Okay, so this is five millimeters. I want this little part to extend beyond the back there by five millimeters. And currently, it's, it's about flush. That's about half where it should be. So, let's tighten that, loosen that, See where that takes us. Remember, you have to hold it here because uh, this wants to turn. Okay, so this is the front of the car. Got the module back there. These two red straps are the emergency release uh, straps that you've probably read about or seen, and they can be found behind this little door here. Okay, so if you need to get into the car, if it's an emergency, you, you take off that little door you just pop it off and you'll see two red straps one with a um, a loop in it you stick your finger in the loop you pull pull down on it and uh, it will release the front so we're still retaining that safety feature this guy here was plugged into this this white um, connector here okay I unplugged this okay so now it looks like that you'll notice on our cable we have one that looks like that as well. Okay, so this is gonna plug in instead. And then this guy, you're gonna plug the old one into this. So I can't sort of hold the camera at the same time, but I'm going to put this, plug it into there, and then put this in and plug it in to this white connector right here. This guy has to feed back down uh, along with the, um, with the old release straps, okay? And we're gonna make it so that you can pull this and it will um, activate the, the electronic lock. All right, so I plugged that, uh, the yellow and red one in. Uh, now we're going to do the same thing here. We are going to intercept this original lock uh, motor wire. We're not replacing it. We're going in parallel to it. Put that in. You feel this lock click. And now you put this back into the where the original one went in. And the lock mechanism faces down. Okay, so now we we're tied into the lock. Um, next thing is buzzer. This goes into the control box. Uh, this is state signal here, state signal here. It plugs into there. Okay. The uh, we're not going to be using the front can. It's LED. No. Uh, power. 
obviously. We haven't hooked up the power yet. Uh, these, the struts are gonna go into here and the soft close automatic door, the module that we just put together is gonna plug into there. Okay. This is going to be how we get our power from the vehicle. This is fused. Okay, so anyway, power's gonna go into here. Super easy how everything's color coded. And then this goes to ground, not uh, much of a problem there. And this goes to the, to this guy, which is gonna be affixed to the battery. So the next thing I'm gonna do is I got this uh, frunk release button. And they're intercepting the signal uh, so that this can act as a debug. So the original wire under here that went into this button, that instead we're gonna plug this into, okay? Plugging this into. And now we're gonna plug this other one which has the same connector as the, as the original, into the button. So we have all of the connectors figured out. These two, remember, just went to the lights that we disconnected to uh, take out the frunk. Um, the big remaining things are where we're getting our power from. And once we've got that, uh, it's plugged into the uh, module and we are going to be good to go. This is going to go on the positive. Okay, so I just verified the installation. Everything's fine, as you saw. It, it opens and closes uh, perfectly. What it does not do, when I triple click the, um, the remote to close all the other doors, the front doesn't automatically close as well. Having said that, the app closes it, the uh, central center console closes it, and of course the remote closes it. So that's all great. Um, the, I haven't routed the wires yet. I just wanted to make sure everything worked. Everything else uh, seems fine. I actually didn't have too many problems uh, taking things apart. Uh, I have an early morning tomorrow, so I don't know if I'll be able to put the frunk back in tonight, uh, which is why I haven't done it. But I think I'll start on it. We'll see where it goes. Unfortunately, the, I might have to take it apart again so I can properly route the wires. Uh, but other than that, uh, it's, it's great. I was uh, super happy that it, uh, all the tolerances were fine. I noticed it, um, I had it, uh, the hood all the way up uh, and then I double clicked it and it just tried to go a little farther up. Um, and so I finally realized that I probably have to close it manually, which I did. And then it sort of understood where it was. And then from then on, it was fine. So uh, very happy with this and um, if I could do it all over again, I would uh, uh, not do anything differently actually. So there you go. Thanks for tuning in.